Inscription is a 2021 roguelike card playing game, and the latest offering from Daniel Mullins Games. Like other games developed by Daniel Mullins, it is filled with hidden secrets and messages, and it links back to previous games. While the goal of most games is to survive, one of the most powerful things your character can do in Inscription is die. In this game, dying introduces the player to a new type of card, a death card. Each time the player dies, they're able to design their own death card, which may be available to them in future run-throughs. The cards that can be designed by the player have an element of chance to them, with the player only having three options drawn randomly from their deck, from which to choose the cost of the card, the attributes, and the sigil. While you never know what options you will have, the right combination on these cards can be game changers. But the player's death cards are not the only ones in the deck. Inscription originally came with four pre-made death cards. These being Casey, Kaminsky, Lewis and Reginald. While at first these names may seem random, as you play more of the game, you find these names start to reoccur, be linked to different characters in world. The cards also raise a question. Do the cards exist because the characters they were named for tried playing the game and lost, making their own cards in the process? Or do they exist because the characters they represent all actually died? Of the four death cards, Casey is the character most referenced through the game. And we know for near certain fact that she died prior to the events of the game. We learn that Casey worked for Game Thuna, the in-game company responsible for producing the in-game version of Inscription. It is Casey who writes the coordinates for the Inscription disc on the card purchased by Luke Carter. Luke Carter, in investigating the origins of the disc, contacts Casey's mother, trying to get in touch with Casey but is told that she died in a fire at work while she was working on Inscription. An email with the details of this incident is also found on Luke Carter's YouTube channel. The story told through Casey's mod shows that Casey was learning about Inscription and about the mysterious Carnival Code before she died. Burying the disc, it seems, is one of the last things she did before her death. It is implied that she was learning more than she was meant to about the game and as a result, she was killed. Reginald also appears to be a character who has been killed for their connection to the Carnoffel Code. Exploring Magnificus's tower in Act 2, we can find a secret room, empty, apart from a candle, and a flickering Department of Defense ID card for one Barry Reginald Wilkinson. This ID card is part of the old data and is seen again at the end of the game, when the old data is unlocked. Gaming sleuths who have more thoroughly explored the secrets behind the ciphers hidden through the game have unlocked records recounting the last mission of Barry Wilkinson, aka Big Ear, who recovered the Carnival Code on a deck of cards from the corpse of Adolf Hitler himself. Barry Wilkinson went on to break the encryption on the old data, he would then smuggle the disc from Moscow to Boston by concealing it among blank discs. Barry knew that this would be risky and that he may be caught. Unfortunately, he was correct. In Act 3, the Trapper reveals Barry's fate. The player is able to trade hollow pelts to the Trapper in exchange for information about the old data. The information is revealed after the player chooses a tarot card. Barry's tarot card is a big ear in reference to his alias. Selecting this card causes the trapper to reveal that Barry Reginald Wilkinson had been discovered in his mission and put to the gun. Now there is a second theory on the identity of Reginald on the death card. Some people believe that Reginald is actually a reference to Root Beer Reggie from Daniel Mullen's previous game, The Hex. Personally though, I believe that Reginald is Barry Reginald Wilkinson. Barry appears just too important to the storyline 
for the death card of Reginald to be anyone but him. But please let me know what you think. Is this death card a reference to the Hex? Or is it commemorating the only character known to break the Knuffle Code? There is less information about the remaining two death cards. We know Kaminsky would be Maxim Kaminsky, the owner of Kaminsky Data Storage. He is referenced in the same records that speak of Barry Wilkinson and referenced in the entries in Casey's mod. It appears that Mr. Kaminsky is aware of what is happening with the game and it appears that he is somewhat fearful of it. What we don't know is whether Kaminsky died, as this is not referenced in the game. The fact that Kaminsky's death card does not use his first name of Maxim also reaffirms to me the likelihood that Reginald is Barry, as it shows that the name on the card is not necessarily the person's first name. Unlike Reginald, there is no ambiguity as to who Kaminsky may refer to. Speaking of ambiguity though, the most ambiguous death card by far is Lewis. There is no Lewis directly referenced in the game. However, there is a Lou that we know is connected to the in-game development of Inscription, this being Lou Natus. Lou Natus was referenced in The Hex as being the CEO of GameFuna. There is also a fake credit in the credits of Inscription for one Lewis Nathus. This is actually a clue for the ARG aspects of the game, which I won't get into here, but it is interesting that this fake name is so close to that of CEO Lou Natus. It leaves open the possibilities that the Lewis death card is the CEO of GameFuna, who perhaps got a little too close to his own game. Or perhaps Lewis is another developer like Casey, who was working on inscription in game, and like her, lost his life because of it. If that was the case, it would make sense that his credit does not link to any real life person. If Lewis was meant to be another in-game GameFuna employee, then perhaps this was a sign of things to come. One of the first in a spate of deaths among those working on Inscription. Playing Casey's mod introduces a number of new death cards, who all appear to be real life people who worked on Inscription. Their names are at the top of the credits, and one of the names, Burke, is distinct enough to make it highly unlikely that this was a coincidence. Altogether, the death cards leave a distinct impression that anyone who comes close to the game or the Knuffle Code is cursed by it, and can perhaps expect that one day there will be a death card of themselves. But please let me know if you have any other theories about the origins or people behind the death cards. Oh, and please tell me what your best death card was in the comments. I love seeing and hearing what everyone is managing to create, and I know some of you have managed to make absolutely wild death cards. And before you go, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out, and I can't wait to talk to you in my next video.